questions to the agenda? I had one in our uh, my department. I just want to bring up the, the Christmas schedule, holiday schedule for the boys. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for letting me come to talk with you tonight about improving tobacco policies. When I spoke to Mel, he um, asked me, you know, several questions. He, he said he asked me about what kinds of policies were out there, if other communities are looking at tobacco policy improvement. And the answer to that is yes. Uh, one of the reasons that I approached the city of St. John is that I was working with the school district on improving their tobacco policy because they're going through an entire um, review of all of their policies and adopting some of the Kansas Association of School Board policy handbooks and procedures. So this seemed like a good time for me to also talk with you because, of course, the school district does use some of the city properties for their school events. So it seemed appropriate that at this time I also speak with you about that. And I also had talked with Nick Garcia at the Recreation Commission about having tobacco-free playgrounds. And he had shared with me and maybe has also shared with you that he did have some concerns about uh, tobacco being used near and on playgrounds, as all parents do. And because, of course, we're very concerned about our toddlers and the fact that many times the one way they learn about things is they pick up things and put them in their mouths. And, of course, we know that we have had cases of nicotine poisoning and also have some issues with the trash that's left behind from tobacco refuse and tobacco use. So um, those are some of the reasons why I prepared a packet of information and materials for you that you probably received about two weeks ago, maybe even three weeks ago now, so that you had a chance to look at that and review. And tonight, one of the additions that I'd like to hand to you is the Barton County Resolution, so that you have an opportunity to look at that too. Close this way and this way so that you have uh, some of the most up-to-date resolutions. I do not have a copy from some of the eastern cities that are looking at these things, but I did include the Garden City Resolution, which is one of the older resolutions in our area, actually, that also provides for tobacco-free parks and recreation areas. And that was one of the key things I did want to talk with you tonight about. Uh, first of all, in your packet, the use of tobacco products in buildings. When I visited with Mel, we pretty much determined that probably the city of St. John had adopted the municipal code and regulations from the state of Kansas, which is the normal course for most cities. And at that time, that would have been the tobacco resolution in 2010 on the Kansas Indoor Clean Air Act. And that provided for tobacco-free buildings and then 10 feet setback, um, no tobacco use within 10 feet of any doors or windows or air intakes and outlets so that air inside of buildings would stay tobacco free and that there would be uh, no one who would be exposed to secondhand smoke at that time. The improvements that I am asking you to review and to consider for your city buildings are on the first page of the packet that I prepared for you. One of the first things that's included is a rationale about um, our duty as public entities and public governments to protect our community and protect our citizens and the health, for the health and well-being of all the residents and um, cites some of the reasons why we want to provide a very fresh, wholesome, clean atmosphere, particularly for our children, 
uh, for the personnel who work in the buildings, as well as for any visitors who might be in any of your buildings. One of the key things that I truly hope that you look very closely at is the expanded definition of tobacco and tobacco products. Um, this is one of the latest definitions that truly tries to encompass everything that's out there now and everything that's coming. We know that Kansas continues to be the test market for the tobacco companies. We have been for about the last four years, and all indications show that we will continue to be the test market. They like Kansas because we're right here in the middle of the United States, and we feel we have a good cross-section probably of people. So we're going to see some of the newest, strangest, <laughs> um, oddest kinds of products. Everything from the tobacco toothpicks that started up about three years ago now, to all of the latest kinds of products. They're going to show up in our markets. So that's one of the reasons why I really ask that you seriously consider that expanded definition of the tobacco products. And you'll notice that it includes any product that contains tobacco, is derived from tobacco, contains nicotine, which could be the synthetic nicotines that are used now in electronic cigarettes, or lobelia, which is not commonly used right now around here but that is often used by Native Americans. So that is one of the ones that is also included in that expanded definition. Any time that it's intended for human consumption or is likely to be consumed, whether it is smoked, heated, chewed, absorbed, dissolved, or ingested by any other means. And if you talk to people from the regional prevention centers who are working with uh, some of the drug prevention and stuff, you would not believe all the ways that it can be ingested. So we do ask that you seriously consider that expanded definition of tobacco. It also includes electronic cigarettes and other electronic smoking devices, but it does not include any cessation product approved by the USDA for medical treatment or to reduce and eliminate nicotine or tobacco dependence. So if it has been approved by USDA, to treat nicotine dependence and tobacco dependence, then it would not be included in this definition and that would be allowed. Things like the, the patches, the lozenges, and of course all of the new things that are also coming out for nicotine replacement therapy. Um, when it comes to electronic cigarettes, I, I even am more concerned than I was three weeks ago because of some of the new evidence and use that we are seeing that not only do electronic cigarettes contain synthetic nicotine and flavorings that are attractive to children and lots of other ingredients, we don't really even know all of them because they're not regulated and not been studied. But today, in my own inbox, in my email, like it got caught in my spam filter, but I had two ads, one for liquid marijuana to go into the e-cigarettes and one for pure and natural hemp liquid to go into e-cigarettes. So we know that they are being, um, they're just being taken over and being used for lots of other uses. Um, the person from the Regional Prevention Center was at, a, uh, their representative was at a meeting earlier today with us and she talked about the fact that they're seeing liquid meth, <coughs> meth being put in those electronic cigarettes. So we know that that is going to be maybe even a bigger issue than we thought we were facing previously. So um, this would also eliminate those in your buildings, and we are strictly talking about your buildings at this time. Um, the statement on tobacco use prohibited, no staff member, volunteers, or visitors are permitted to use any of that definition, tobacco products at any time, including non-business hours, in or on your city property, including in building facility or vehicle, owned, leased, rented, or chartered by your city, and on any city grounds, athletic grounds, or parking lots. That would be one of the provisions that you could consider at any city or city-related event whether that event occurs on your city property 
or off city property. If you are the major sponsor, if you're the sponsor, then you would have the option of, of regulating that too. Prohibiting promotion. We know that <coughs> the tobacco companies are, particularly when they're pushing some of their new products, are really gung ho to sponsor an event to give you some money or give you know give you a, maybe a performer or a display or something like that. Um, I would like for you to consider and ask that you consider prohibiting that kind of promotion of tobacco at your local events that you sponsor. The notice, uh, the city would be able to post appropriate signs indicating that tobacco use is not permitted and when possible written and verbal notices in communication when you, uh, will be used to advertise the product. Opportunities for cessation, the city would post information that they receive from the county health department about current support systems and programs and services to encourage visitors <coughs> and employees to abstain from the use of tobacco products. So this one speaks to the tobacco product use in your building. And it does not take the place of the state law. It just improves it a little bit. That makes it a little bit stronger and defines e-cigarettes as one of the kinds of tobacco that you would not allow in your building or in your vehicles on your property, depending on how you wish that to stay. We cannot do less than the state law. We must be at least as strong as the state law. But you also can be a more, have a stronger or a better policy if that is what you choose to do. The local entity always has control. Did anyone have any questions they'd like to ask me about suggestions for your building's policy? Just for clarification, when we visited, she asked us if, you know, we didn't, we don't, you know, it's a smoke free environment, we've got signs up and everything. Have we ever adopted that? I can't remember the, the number that you quoted there. Yeah, I don't recall it. that we ever have, maybe, but you know, we've got the signs up, so if that's a step you want to take, you know, to, to adopt that. So, but you know, we have smoke free signs up, so that's probably as far as it ever that, went. That's probably the policy that when the state law came in, we probably adopted just smoke free policies that agreed with or concurred with the state law. It might have been a, a statement that very simple. Yeah, like there's signs around the school that say gun free, tobacco free? Yes, yes there are. There so many. Mm -hmm. What year did that state statute come out? 2010. Yeah, I don't recall. Mm -hmm. But because it was state law and it covered all public buildings, right. so every it's and it's both sites, there. yeah, it's already there. And um, So it wasn't something we had to adopt? You really wouldn't have had okay. to adopt it, no. Some people, some cities do as part of their, like they adopt everything the state did. They, it's like their municipal code. They adopt everything that the state sent them for the updates for that year. And it's Is that part of the UPOC? No. Okay. No, because UPO, yeah, no, this, that's just the state statute. Okay. So that would be um, the improvements as far as your city buildings are concerned. For outdoor recreational facilities, I also looked at some model policies for that because I had visited with um, the superintendent about the city-owned park where the football field is located, and the, I believe that the school board is looking at what is their jurisdiction in those kinds of things because they certainly have jurisdiction over any of the school-owned property and any of the school leased property, I believe is how it's possibly stated there. But um, they, they, you know, are struggling with, well, the city owns this, and but we, we have events there, and the city probably has to make the policy that would be set for those recreational areas, and then the school district could concur with that, and then make sure that their, their policies say, tobacco-free events at city-owned properties and those kinds of things, so that their policy would also agree with whatever you would decide. Um, the rationale is given there about how um, 
tobacco use in the proximity of children and adults engaging in outdoor recreational facilities is uh, detrimental to health, can be uh, offensive to those who are using those and sharing those facilities. Um, cities have an opportunity to be a leader and to set the example, frankly. And I think that I'm sure you've probably read that. So there's there's a good rationale. And this is an example of a policy, and a policy, not an ordinance, but a policy that you could put into place. And notice that enforcement section, appropriate signs posted. And I meant I forgot my sign out in the car, court, but it is a metal sign about this tall, and it speaks to tobacco-free playgrounds and tobacco-free recreational areas. And I would be able to help you with getting that signage. Uh, some of it I'd be able to get free from Kansas Department of Health and Environment. And I've also asked the state coalition if they would be interested in providing signs, free signs, for cities who adopted ordinances for tobacco-free playgrounds and tobacco-free recreational areas and fields. So that would basically you post the signs. The community is educated about the policy that's in place. We provide notice in newspapers and on media, and that posting is important, of course. And then staff just look occasionally and see if people are complying. And persons who are violating, violating that could be ejected from the event or from the facility for the remainder of the event. But we're not talking about ordinances that have fines and penalties connected to them. We're just simply asking people to comply. And that's, that's the kind of compliance that has proved to be effective in other areas and in other states. Uh, when I talked to the uh, people from Garden City Rec, they said they have no problems at all with that. The signs are up, the parents are there with their little kids at their events, and with their youngsters, their teenagers, and it's, it's just, they police it themselves, basically, you know, if somebody is using tobacco around their children, it's highly likely that a parent would go up and say, please, you know, take your tobacco use outside the recreational area and away from our events so that our kids are not exposed to that at this particular time. And then on the frequently asked questions, a lot of times that um, answers a lot of issues as far as what our current state law is. Our current state law does not speak to any outdoor areas. And you might say, well, why are we considering this? And I guess my concern is for the little children, particularly the ones that are on our playgrounds. Um, when one, another state did a cleanup in their, in their parks, they found that over 50% of the trash collected had to do with tobacco use. And that now, of course, can include anything from the partially used containers of electronic cigarette liquids or whatever else was in them, to the cigarette butts, to the cigars, to all kinds of things. So we know that it helps to make our parks and our playing fields and our particular our children's playgrounds cleaner. So that's one good reason about why to do that. Um, and almost all of the communities who are actively doing these things, it's all self-compliance. You know, if you post the signs about where it's allowed and where it's not allowed, most people comply and there really isn't a lot of trouble with that. So the policies are working. And um, of course one of the major benefits as far as I'm concerned is that we don't have little kids putting things into their mouths that they should not be putting into their mouths because it's available right there. At the, at, well, they're close to the ground, it's easy for them to pick up. Okay, and, um, another question that often comes up is this kind of just, you know, not really necessary. It is very similar to your policies about having alcohol in your recreation areas and in your parks and litter from pets. Very, I, know, I bet you have regulations about that as far as uh, pets having their feces and everything in the park. I'm sure you have regulations about that and cleaning that up too. So it's very similar to those kinds of things, just trying to keep our parks as clean and as safe and healthy as they possibly can be. The next page really speaks to the youth recreational facility and to um, the rec commission itself. I wanted to just give you a copy of that 
so you would know that we're talking to recognition about that also, and that Nick is probably going to be talking to his board very soon about that. The next piece is just a simply an example of a type of a sign that could be provided for you, tobacco-free zone. And the one that I have out in the car is a picture of a child on a black and white sign. It's on a white background with black lettering. It says tobacco use is prohibited at these playgrounds and play areas, those kinds of things. I did include the Garden City Ordinance. Mel had asked me to make sure that I had some examples of some of the local or relatively local ordinances that speak to this. And of course, I did include the Martin County Resolution, which they formally adopted, and that one does come with penalties. The county resolution would be similar to a city ordinance, a city law that you would adopt rather than a policy. And when we adopt resolutions and ordinances, there are usually penalties involved with those. So I did provide that as an example of something if you really wanted to go the direction of ordinance rather than policy. Did you have any questions that you would like to ask me? As I said before, I, I sincerely ask that you consider improving your tobacco policies for the children and all of the residents of your community, particularly for your own, um, for yourselves too, as part of your protections that you really look at that expanded definition of tobacco for you to adopt as policy um, so that if you are, let's put it this way, you can avoid litigation. If you have something in writing that says this is our policy and if someone would challenge you, then you have the written proof that it is a policy and it is enforceable and that would save you possibly some litigation and some issues down the road. And that's another plus for having something in place because if it's very ambiguous and you don't really have anything written down, then it's a little tougher to say, hey, <laughs> but we, everybody knows we don't do this. <laughs> it's a little tougher to you know, make that stand up in court if you'd ever have that possibility. Thank you very much for letting me come and talk with you and to provide this information for you. And I would truly enjoy coming back and speaking with you again if you get to the, um, a place where you're ready to look at specific policy or if you are thinking that you want to just um, adopt something very similar to this, I can provide the e-copies on it so it can be easily cut and paste to add the things that you want, take out the things that you don't want, and make it a good policy for the city of St. John, for yourselves, for your buildings, for your parks and your play areas, particularly your playgrounds for your toddlers and your smaller children. I would really, I hope that you, were, you will be able to maybe do something with that. Um, there is no time frame on this. I'll be glad to come back any time that you're ready to look at this and work on it. I hope that you look at it in the beginning of this upcoming year and consider it for something as an improvement for your city and to help set policy for the rest of the year because I know you have the big St. John Jubilee coming up in June. Or is it right at the end of May now? Is it right May. at the end of May? It, that's what I was thinking. Okay. That and some of the other uh, special events that you have. I've helped work with the farmer's markets and getting those started here at the park and work with the girls, um, the uh, director at the Stafford County Health Department, of course, with Doris Tompkins. And she couldn't be here this evening. <laughs> She's having fun. She was coming back from a trip, so she said she would not be able to be here tonight. But uh, Doris knows all about this, and I did cover this with her. And we had talked through this, and she felt that this was also a very good step for the city to take. And also had talked, of course, with Nick Garcia previous to this meeting. And of course, been talking with Josh Meyer at the superintendent's office um, about school policies now for a good six months or more. So this is just a good opportunity to kind of uh, make that all come full circle. Again, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. All right. Consent agenda. Madam President. Mayor.
Um, I did have, and you have it in front of you, a change in the minutes that I had sent to you. We had not put on the, the tires for um, the police department. Mm -hmm. The motion was made to have it purchased through SNS tires. However, usually they purchase them through Kansas Land Tires and SNS mounts and gets them as the labor on that. So um, the invoice came through as Kansas Land Tires. So I wanted to make sure we matched that yeah. with so when we do our audit. So that I did add Kansas Land Tires in your own information. Yes, that's tire is aware of that. <laughs> that's how he does yeah, it. Yeah, that's part of the state bid for the tires. Okay. Yeah. Um, the first, you know, he orders them from them, but they just direct bill it to the city. Yeah. Okay. I would still like us to buy the tires from a local business. If they're the ones putting the tax dollars in there. <coughs> I mean, the only thing is you don't get the pricing. You, know, you don't get the well, state pricing that way. I understand that, but still. The businesses are the one that make up the town. I mean, you know what I mean? What kind of difference is that? Well, on larger tires, it can be hundreds of dollars. So, well, that's up to you guys. But that's yeah, what I would always, always ask, use state Just pricing. ask Marshall. If you yeah, know. I mean, I think we at least I'll be able to find the differences and then make that decision based on on the of the differences from here on. Yeah. Right. I mean, just for the fact to try and keep as much business local as we can. <clears throat> So from now on, we need to have a bid from SNS as well as yeah, to show whatever the differences state contract or, price is. Yeah. Okay. So I can make a decision whether it's okay. What is the total of the two put together? It was under. I mean, it was what that was. Seven hundred and twenty-nine dollars and twenty cents. cents. Okay, so that was the original yeah. that was put in front of it? Yeah, it just didn't have that broke out. And so when the auditors would come and check that motion, they wouldn't find an invoice to SNS tires for that amount. So how much was the tires at Kansas on? Um, Six something. Never in there. Four of them. That's all right. Cool. I'll say it was in there. I don't remember what it was. Six I do remember seeing it. minutes for the regular meeting of 11-4-2014 as amended. Approved minutes for the special meeting of 11-11-2014. Approved appropriation ordinance 11-18-2014 in the amount of $103,055.08. Is there any discussion? And that, that has got the tires in it, correct? Yes. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. All right, now. Okay, uh, first item is a uh, skating rink. We've been for weeks and weeks trying to get prices uh, for some work to be done over there at the skating rink. If you recall last meeting, I mentioned uh, the company that put the coating on last time. I called him again today, and as he was hanging up the phone, I made sure he had all the correct email information. He said, I will, I'll get that to you right now when I hang up. I still have not got it. Anyway, he indicated, yes, he was interested and all that. Now, this other, uh, Ben Long, this CTS uh, Blending Services, he and I met over there and we just went down to some of the improvements and we really, my purpose of presenting this to you isn't necessary to make a decision tonight unless you want to, but uh, as we found out, you know, we really don't have much funding toward this project, so we need to decide what is a priority and maybe how we can fund it in the future, or maybe do it in steps or however you want to do it. So uh, I do want to point out, and I didn't have an opportunity to get back with uh, been on his coating. I, the 
Sutherland Builders, uh, if you'll notice down there, he's talking about uh, using a, uh, oh, it's a Sherwin Williams armor seal, and it is actually a paint rather than a coating. And the, the guy from RC Sports who's done this, he, he said he has heard not good things about using a product like this. He said they're a good coating for the purpose, but what he puts down is a true epoxy coating. And he says he it's called a uh, rink coat. It's just made especially to put on skating rinks. It's not something that you use for anything. It is made specifically for skating rinks. And if that's you know what's been used in the past, I think the proof's in in, in the life we've had out of this. So I think uh, you know I need to get with Ben on what what he was going to propose. And he's got some proposals on uh, grinding the coating all the way down to bare concrete polishing it and you know putting a clear coat or a colored coating on it uh, and going that way and uh, versus he, he was concerned when he looked at it as far as putting another coat over the top of it it's got like probably three coats of this epoxy and it's you know it's popping the spots but if this other guy if we're gonna be a price I would agree with that I don't know but he said he would fill that in that's one of these uh, you know, prices he had on doing it. So, uh, and I know uh, Julianne had uh, contacted uh, Abbey Carpet uh, for the non rink uh, floor area to get that carpeted. So, we've got a lot of things to look at, a lot of different variations. And the uh, handrail, that was one thing that had been talked about. The, you know, the carpeting that's on the wall uh, is, you know, pretty, pretty stained with just, you know, hands rubbing on it for years. We tried to get it clean, it wouldn't come clean. So it's time to probably take that down, put up a new carpet. And it was mentioned about you know putting up a handrail uh, as far as helping younger kids uh, when they're learning how to skate. Plus the handrail will keep people away from the wall rather than hugging the wall to get around. They'll, it'll hold them, hold them off of us. So uh, Ben had a price on that. Sutherland's had it in there, but like I said, it's not broken out. I also, I talked to Sutherland's about breaking that out, didn't hear anything back from them. So I guess the thing we need to look at is we've got some some guidelines here, I suppose, to, as far as costs, what, uh, what direction we want to go. Uh, one thought was as far as the coating might actually be the last thing we do and do all the other work. The, the upper drywall above the existing carpet uh, is chipped and there's nails that have popped out and probably needs fixed and uh, uh, you know painted before we start you know, the rock claws on and everything. But you know if you're going to paint that, then you know do your carpet handrail and maybe down to the floor. Or maybe you have a different thought on it. But uh, I what, guess what's the worst? Is the floor the worst? The floor it, it just is an appearance. There's nothing to keep anybody from skating or anything. It's just got some little minute places where it's popped off, more of a cosmetic, it's not you know, rough to roller skate or I've not heard a complaint. We've got one spot in the northeast corner that where it's, you know, I suppose there's a spot about like this that's come out, but, you know, it's it's really, like I say, right now it's more of a cosmetic on the floor, but all the other stuff, you know, if we're going to you know, try and update it, you know, we need to look at all of it. And maybe we don't want to do a handrail, you know, maybe We've never had one all these years, but right. I mean, a lot of skating rinks. Yeah. A lot of skating <laughs> rinks have them, you know, and you know, some people I've talked to thought, you know, that'd be, uh, you know, a good idea. I think we'd avoid some injuries if we had something for the kids that are just learning to skate to hang on to. But when they run into it too, it might be bad because they are going to make it out of steel. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right. you get your arm down between and break your arm. Yeah. yeah. Anything you do, you can yeah. end up yeah. skating. Right, skating. yeah. You can also say, well, if I'd had a handrail like, hang on to, I wouldn't have fell and busted my head. You know, yeah. who knows? So it's just. What do you have to say about it, Adam, since you're running it now? I like the idea of the rail, but at the same time, I really think that's going to be uh, more of a problem. Just because, the, you know, right now, and, and John I can attest this when she ran, these kids get going, and they use the wall to stop. So, and I think Kevin's right. I mean, 
if you lose your footing next to that wall and you go to grab for something, if you miss it, you're going to break your arm, or if you if you're hugging the wall and you fall, you're going to knock your head on it. I mean, it would be wonderful for the kids, but I really think you're going to end up with probably more brought more issues than I think what it would benefit. But that's just my opinion. And, and Mel's right about the floor. There's nothing I've skated on it. I mean, there's nothing that's, that's tripping you or anything like that. It is. It's just wear and tear. You know, in the old skating rink, <laughs> it was even like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we so, used it rolling to crack the whip, too. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> um, do we have a fund? For the skating rink? For the skating rink. And if we do, how much money is in it currently? We, it's in the WIT fund. Okay. And then we have, like, for maintenance and stuff, there's some money in the general fund for that. Okay. What? Okay. What was left in the WIC fund for that? We can only spend the occurred yeah, interest, right? Yeah, I think we looked at it for talking about it. I was thinking 12. Yeah, I was thinking 12. Do mm -hmm. you remember 12? Yeah. yeah. Are you having lots of kids, Adam? We're, we're averaging between. The high is 60, low, low is about 40. We're averaging between 50 and 60. Ooh. What are you giving away over there? I don't give away any, well, candy. Giant, you know, the giant uh, pixie sticks that we call kitty crack are pretty popular, but. Kevin's <laughs> <laughs> going. That's what I'm Decide not to go with a handler. That's you know one thing. You know, you can there. You can't pay the money. Walls and uh, um, we have twelve thousand in there available for use. Twelve thousand six. And that's just in the deal. Yeah. Unless it's in the general fund. Um, that's not in the general fund. That's in the wit. Um, that's just the interest, right? Yes, that's available to spend. Um, in the general fund for Say when they start if we did want to do something? No, I was probably not even really trying to feed it by down and get with them. It's just, and see, the other thing about this is, you know, it's going to be, if we do like repair the upper walls and do the carpeting and all that, I mean, that's a fair sized project. You know, how long it would take them, whether they would do a little work on the weekends or. Uh, when, Adam, do you, how, the skating schedule? Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. I'm sorry? Skating, what's the schedule, the off days for school? Oh, um, we're, we're open Tuesdays after school, um, Fridays and Saturdays, and then any other days for parties. So. And, I mean, this honestly could be something that could be done in the off season also. Mm -hmm. That'd be probably more logical. Better plan. Okay. Right now, I'm building maintenance for in the WIT, fund, WIT Center. Department of the General Fund, we have $900. There's not a large budget for that. Part of it's a cleaning contract with the skating rink manager themselves. They have $1,000 for skates, disinfectant, what other strings and pencils and all that kind of stuff. Take the handrail off this first test and you're down to 15, 4, 19. Isn't that what he's charging $7,500 for yeah. the handrail? Yeah. 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 
in the you know the carpet area outside the, the skating rink, you know that could be looked at at any time. You know, just had it clean. It's it's even after we clean it, it really doesn't look all that great. But I'm just saying as far That's as <laughs> but how long will it stay clean? <laughs> well, that's one of the things that they're looking at doing with this um, CTS bit is putting in the carpet tiles so that if you have an area that gets stained that you can't get cleaned, you pop that tile out and, you, and put a new one down. And that's what we do at the school as well. We use also, the carpet tiles. We use it in traffic areas. Yeah. He said they've used it at the lodge too, so yeah. it sounds like a like a good, good solution to that problem. Now, is um, CTS the only local person? Well, yeah, it's the only people I know of that would. As far as that, uh, I can get. There was one other. You know, if you want to, once we decide what we want to do. You know, then we could, you know, get solicit some more from more tips. So. Are those bathrooms ADA compliant? Yes. Mm -hmm. What kind of shape are they in? The men's, I think, is. The bathrooms? Mm -hmm. Bathrooms are good. Are they? What about the water fountains? Water fountain doesn't work. Water fountain doesn't work. We've got a guy that give us a price on replacing it, so that's, that's in the works. So. Right. You kind of have a rough idea what that's going to be? Oh, uh, what was that? About 800 to 1,000, somewhere. I was thinking nine, so we must yeah. be close. So you that pretty it. much eats up their hmm? building maintenance right there. Matt, right. Okay. We, we approved it when we meeting. What we're talking about, yeah, but I already told you to go ahead and do it. So, yeah. Okay, so it sounds like council is interested in doing some repairs and upgrades and clean up, clean up, whatever. Um, do we want to have Mel get quotes on basically the three items here and then look at doing the floor at another time? Start building some money up, knowing that it's going to cost us probably somewhere between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars to get that done right. Hey, Mel, how do you feel about on the floor? Do you think we need to have it taken clear down to the cement? Well, that was just his proposal. That's he was with the chips that were in it. He looked at it. And he was a little concerned about going over the top of it. And once again, I need to question him on his coating he was going to use. I'm I'm a little concerned if we're not going to go with something that's made for a skating rink because the way this guy explained it you know you can get epoxy paint but this is a true epoxy you know like when you do a two-part epoxy glue you know you're putting the two together and it flows out to like, squeeze it out or whatever and then it gets hard it's a, like a you know a plastic coating this this other uh, paint that was in this other uh, you know, proposal I don't think would and I need to talk to it again and see what he was doing or what he was uh, going to propose but he, he just said he could take it down polish it up and but if you do notice on there there is a, a maintenance an ongoing maintenance yearly maintenance uh, and I don't know what that would entail or the cost or whatever so but you know if he took it clear down fixed all the spots in the concrete got it and polished it up smooth you know other than maybe an occasional coating on a clear coat or whatever and like I say I don't know how that holds up, but uh, that, that was just one of the oh, yeah. He's going to guarantee it labor and everything for 10 years. If he does a yearly maintenance. Right. right. So I don't know what the yearly maintenance is. So. Right. Okay, and this is strictly for the rank area, correct? He does have on here on the uh, the carpet area, the, the very bottom one. Mm -hmm. Skating rink area carpet. That's, that's the Tear out the old carpet, countertop, and all that. That's but it, we're talking just the rink area. I mean, we're not talking about the room that the seniors use. Correct. Yeah. He did measure that. I had to measure it just for if we decide to do something at some point. But I told the seniors you know, we were just getting some information. But he doesn't indicate that that includes the 
the senior center. So this was just the entryway and the, you know, where the concessionary is and all that. So. Because here's my thought process. If we start doing a bunch of upgrades to the skating rink, the seniors are going to want to know why we're just doing part of the building. Mm -hmm. And he's got the measurements on that, so I mean, he could do the same thing. Don't they have their own fund? Fund? All come to that with fund, doesn't it? Well, I think that they have some of their own fund as part of the um, Sunflower Seniors. I think they have some kind of funding, maybe through the state. Do you know, Terry? I think it's for the program. And for stuff. the program. Yeah. Um, as far as the building, when they've needed stuff, you know, like a new air conditioner or something like yeah. that, we've been forthcoming taking care of that, that sort well, of that, thing. So. That's come out of the WIC fund, hasn't mm -hmm. it? Yes. Part I of the well, I would have to look for sure, but I'm pretty sure it had to have. Because yeah. we don't have the, fu the, the funds in. Uh, the general fund to do that. So. I think that's the reason we're down to 12,000. We just got them doing in front of that building, didn't we? Yeah. It's yeah. been a few years back, yeah. but. And they did just <coughs> come to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we do a, a pretty good job of making sure that. I just. Yeah. Playing doubles up. Yeah. Doubles up. Mm -hmm. But if we do the carpet, we probably ought to do the whole thing. Oh, yeah. They, you know, they cook, not do a cook in there necessarily, but they serve meals and there's definitely some stains in there also. And yeah, they I rent agree. that out periodically too. Yeah, so I agree. If you're going to do that, you might as well do mm -hmm. it. So if we can if we decide what we're going to do, we can proceed along those lines with the advisors. So, do we want to shelve this then until like April of next year as we're coming to the end of the season and look at. I don't want to close down the rent now. I mean, yeah. they don't get to skate yeah. up. That's well, the way it is. Some of that depends on what you're doing. I mean, the floor you would have to. But if you're doing the walls, you're going to have to close down, too. Yeah, I suppose. It makes more sense to wait and do yeah, it. Yeah. it There's a lot of activities in there in the winter time, yeah. not just skating. And the other thing that, from the kids hitting the wall, the, the kickboard, especially on the north end, they, they've got the whole wall shoved back. I mean, it's, it's moved. <laughs> So, so part of it's and I like, don't know what you do about that. Yeah, so you print it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just saying you're probably going to have to take something down to get back to it to get it pulled out to the stay. You know. Yeah, that, that old carpet might be old. old and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just saying you may like think you're going to do a weekend project and that you're yeah. a lot more than what you think. So I think to do a good, you know, need to take down the old carpet and see what's going on. I may have to pull some pieces off of the the wall and get back in there and re-anchor that so it doesn't. Is that a metal a, plate? <laughs> is that a false wall from the, the cement wall? And there's a false wall in front yeah, of there's, it? Yeah, there's another outside wall between okay. that and it's, it's just scooted back. You can see, you see the coating on the floor, especially on the north end, and it's, you know, it's, it's an inch or so back from where it should be, so. Any other discussion on the skating rink? So, just for clarification, so we'll know when we get ready to do this, we're looking at doing the upper wall and the car re carpet the, the lower wall, re anchor that right now, and carpet the outer, the skating rink entryway area, concession stand area, and the senior center for right now. And if we can get some good numbers on a coating, you know, that would be. Probably the last thing we can do. We're not going to have enough money to do that. Yeah, no, but I'm just yeah. saying we can, you know, next year yeah, we can budget, stages. or I don't know how you can come up with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah because that's already set. Yeah, yeah, it's just on, I mean, as we accumulate the interest. No, that basically these days will be. Yeah. Well, unless unless you would choose that next point. year to budget that in um, the general fund and tax for it. And that, that wouldn't be in 2016's budget. Okay. Next thing uh, would be holiday schedule for Christmas uh, being on Thursday and customarily the council in lieu of any bonuses or anything off is given like the Christmas Eve day off, but since Friday 
you know, Thursdays, Christmas, or Friday, uh, you know, the following weekend, if you choose to do that, if, if that could be the, the council's choice, would just kind of help people plan the holidays and stuff like that. So if you would choose to do that. So the city office would be open on Christmas Eve, but would be closed the Friday following? Correct. I haven't in the past, hasn't the city office closed on that three? No, it's been no. closed on the 24th completely. Mm -hmm. You mean 23rd? 24th. That's Christmas Day. Oh no, 25th. <laughs> <laughs> Catholics, they always celebrate the day before. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, because this is not a standard holiday for us. It's always up to you guys whether you want to give that or not. So we have to make a motion because it's not in our policy. So I'll make a motion for the city employees to have off the 25th and the 26th. And second. Any further discussion? All there? Opposed? Motion carries. Five vote. Thank you. Okay, the next, uh, I'm just under the superintendent's report. This is just more of an informational thing. Uh, it's come to our attention uh, under our zoning regulations in regards to gunsmithing. This is a new state thing that's kind of come about. Under home occupations, we cannot regulate uh, gunsmithing, ammunition sales, or, or firearm sales. Uh, we currently do because uh, if you we can't just pick something out according to the new regulations. So what we're going to do, and uh, Bickley has Bickley Foster, who's helped us with our uh, zoning regulations, has adopted an ordinance, which will go before the planning commission to, to look at. And basically, the only thing that will be regulated uh, for someone that would sell guns or ammunition or do gunsmithing would be signage, which would fall underneath our normal home occupation regulations and outside storage. So in other words, we can't prohibit someone to from doing the, the gun work and all that, which we, we have in our ordinance right now, our regulations. So we'll, we'll need to change that. And like I said, I'll go before the Planning Commission, and then I'll come back to the council and go from there. So I just want to let you know kind of uh, what's going on. And we'll have to set up a meeting with the Planning Commission. And we'll let, uh, uh, John have a copy of this ordinance to make sure there's no issues that he can see. So, and that's all I had. Chief Sanders? Um, I just need to add Patrick Amick. Which time. one? Patrick. Which the one? The young one. Okay. Is that a junior or is that, I don't know if he's <laughs> a second or a junior. I just know <laughs> he and Dad have the same name. Yeah. Okay, do I just need to appoint him then? Okay. <coughs> appoint Patrick Nemec, Jr., Fire Department, NDMEC. And, and that's all I have. And then they need to approve your. So move to approve. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5 vote. Good. Chief Sailor? Am I doing a report first? That's up to you. Um, yeah, I guess we can go ahead and go with Chief. The only thing I have, and, um, Sergeant Greedy had mentioned to me last uh, council meeting there were some questions on our progress with the scums. No, we haven't had any more um, reports. For the last couple of weeks, um, we got rid of, I think, five or six of them in total. So either we've gotten rid of them or the cold is, they're not running around so much. But either way, our stunt issues seem to be on the decline, thankfully. Did you get Anna Minnis fixed up? She did call me. When did she call you? Um, last week. The last time I talked to her, she had had a private individual trap two of them on, their, on her property. And the last time I talked to her, she was taken care of. So, I mean, I can, if 
We might check. With it was them. it was before that, so yeah, okay. I'll get back with her and make sure. <laughs> still leaving traps out or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we still got some out, but we just we haven't had any activity in them for a couple of weeks. regarding three or four officers. Um, Vicki, Kevin, I think it was you who came in and had her um, get the figures on that. This is the first time I'm seeing this part of it. Um, Sergeant Rudy and also... I apologize. I thought it was in your packets. Well, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, Sergeant Rudy also mentioned to me um, there was some questions uh, regarding the schedule, how we've done in the past and how we do it. Um, the reason I didn't print anything off um, for our schedule-wise was just to save some confusion. Because it is, if you're not used to looking at it, it's kind of difficult as to how all that reads. Um, the easiest way I can explain the schedule is with four officers, when we are able, we will have 24-7 coverage with three eight-hour shifts um, starting off. We've, we've visited and tried to look at, or and we'll try to look at the possibility of 10 or 12-hour shifts to see if that would be possible to cover that 24 hours when we have the people. Um, but again, as, as we've discussed in the past, if we have somebody at training, um, days off, vacation, and that kind of thing, then we'll, we'll revert back to having some call time. But with four officers, when the staff is there, we would have, I'm guessing, essentially three, three eight, uh, eight hour shifts covering the 24 hours. Um, the question is to how we used to do the schedule. Uh, when Sonny was here, he essentially didn't like to work by himself. So even when we had four officers, um, oftentimes we would have two officers working day shifts, Sonny would be in the office, um, and the officer working day shift with him would be taking the, the majority of the calls. Is that how you would continue to do it? No. Okay. No, no that's, that's what I was saying. With four officers now, whenever we had the staff, we would be covered 24-7. Um, on this 2015 estimated amount for a new officer, why would we, why would we be looking at 100 hours of overtime? I, I didn't prepare this. I know, but I, it, I mean, I'm just asking, would we be looking at that much overtime if we had a full crew of four people? I, I believe she's probably basing that on call-out on, uh, call time during in the past. I think she based it on the average of the overtime when there was four officers. Right. But, you know. And I would anticipate that being less because of the fact there would be times when we were working eight hour shifts. And now, obviously, you know, for the purpose of doing reports, um, if you're coming to the end of your shift and you have domestic, you have an accident or something like that, you're not going to pass that off to the officer coming off. Um, I would, I would hope that would be less. I, I really don't have a way of estimating that because I haven't, to be honest, just haven't sat down and looked at it. Okay. What about standby time? Um, if you've got four officers, are they still going to be getting paid $40, $40 a week standby? I, I believe so. And the reason being, um, I'd have to remember the year. Yeah, they made a motion to give it to them whether they had it or not. Okay. Um, and, of course, that would be up to you guys whether you right. want to continue that. The reason being, but the way it stands right now, yes. Right, and the reason being was because that was already part of the um, salary package, I guess you would call it, um, and then going to a different schedule. Basically, the officers would be making less. I mean, obviously, they're not going to be responsible for that four hours of on call time. That's the reason that was recommended to stay in there. Wasn't it Joe's recommendation, though, when we went to four officers, that we got rid of that? If, or that if we did would, go to four officers. Or that it would go back the way it was when, you know, they would have, um, was it 12 hours on call mm -hmm. without any kind of pay and anything after that, there was pay for that. So like when they had somebody gone or something, they would be con compensated if they were doing more than that 12 hours of on call. I'd have to look at the manual for sure, but that's how was set up by how many hours per week that they 
actually have the on-call time. <clears throat> But yes, you're right. He's, his recommendation was that that would be cut back. And I think a lot of that was, you know, to ensure that we were doing everything we could to cover that 24-7, whereas in the past with four officers, that wasn't being done. Saying we'd have 24-hour coverage, someone would actually be out and about all during the night? When we had the staffing, yes. So, so essentially, like I said, it'd be three eight-hour shifts. So I, as the chief, would work, uh, just as an example, eight in the morning before in the afternoon. The next shift would come on four to midnight. The next shift would be midnight to eight. So yeah, the person on midnight to eight, that's their shift. They're going to be out patrolling or you know doing the same thing they do on all the other shifts, just at a different time. And of course, on the health insurance benefit, yeah. that's really, there's no way to predict since it's all based on age and everything. So we've had this discussion several times in the past. Are we interested in looking at a fourth officer again? I see my, my head nodding yes over here that I would expect. The rest of you. Everyone speak at once. Kevin? Yeah, I'm, I've been approached by the school board members and evidently we need it. Sherry? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it. If I was guaranteed there'd be somebody not at home patrolling the streets from midnight until 6 o'clock in the morning, I might think. But I haven't seen that in the last two and a half, three years. That's because we don't have the manpower to do it. Jonna put it on the agenda for the next meeting. And I'd like to see us take a vote on it at that time. Is there any additional information that you feel like you need, or does this pretty much tell you what you wanted? I'd like to know how much schooling has been done in the last year. I don't know how to come from you. Schooling? Yeah, how much training you guys have attended in the last year. Okay. Actually, I'd like to see it for the last five years. Is that doable? Well, Charlie hasn't been here for five years. I mean, are, are you wanting past employees or just current? I just, I want to know. Because what I, what I can do, I can do for, I can contact Seapost, and I can get a report from Seapost on the three of us that are here from, I mean, we, we can go from the beginning of our employment if you want. That would be awesome. Yeah. Can we also get, like, uh, you, the only thing you got is the uniform maintenance at $20. Uh -huh. Also the cost uh, per officer for all the clothes that we're buying all the time. I mean, like the tactical the gear, the uniforms, the belts. Are. Yeah, all that stuff too. And that's $20 per pay period. Yeah. Yeah. So it's $40. What's now? it going to cost us to completely outfit into officers? Do you, okay, in the past we haven't completely outfitted an officer. The officer's been responsible for a lot of that. So do you want that figure versus... How do you do it now? How do we do it now? Darren or Charlie responsible for their own? When, mm -hmm. yes, we when I started, when Aaron started, when Charlie started, we all had to buy our own gun belts. We had to buy our own pepper spray case. We had to buy our own handcuffs. We had to buy our own baton. We had to buy our own boots. The only thing the city paid for was uniforms, gun and holster, Magazine and magazine pouches. And that's like and Well, not, not, no, I, the first two years I bought my, or my first two rounds, I bought my body armor. Aaron bought his first round and Charlie bought his first round. It was just the last, um, the last go around that the council approved to start buying the body armor. 
Well, I'd, I'd like to see all the costs associated with that, with the offices. All of you. I mean, whether it's a fourth or third or whatever, you know what I mean? Well, the, well, I, I'm just that's what I'm asking. I'm wanting to know if you want to if you want to know how much it has costed in the past. Do you want to know how much it would cost to outfit an officer with the city providing everything? Give me both. Okay. I mean, the cost is going to be the same. It's just going to be a different breakdown. Right. So it's going to be about fifty-two thousand dollars if you average, say, the insurance. Yeah, I don't have. I've looked at too many numbers today. I don't have the capability to add in my head right now. Okay, is there anything else we need from Adam before the next meeting? Thank you. All right. Donna. Um, the only thing I really have is um, I just put in front of you tonight just for your information, some things that have come up um, in the legislative sessions. And that very first one is a request for action. So you might want to look over that and determine whether you want to uh, make a phone call or not. They've listed your, uh, the districts and stuff, so you don't even have to look up the number if you choose to make that call. Um, and then the other things are just items you may be interested in as well. Other than that, that's all I have, unless you guys have something. Okay, under the electric department, I need a five-minute executive session for non-elected personnel for employment benefits. Um, council and mayor. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Yeah, I would move that we uh, reapprove the conditions. Reapprove the conditions to hire Jeff Williamson with three weeks vacation, 12 days of sick leave available immediately upon hiring in lieu of health care and that the uh, accrual, accrual. Accrual. accrual will be the same here for the preceding years. years. Second. Is there any further discussion? All of there? Sherry's abstain. Motion carries. Four. One abstinence. Attorney had business that he had to handle in Kansas City today or today and wasn't going to make it back in time, so we will keep that on for the next meeting. Um, new business charter ordinance number 15, and I think that's part of the um, the code that we're getting ready to codify. And we decided we were going to do that all at once, so we're still waiting on. The ground the water, conservation. water conservation, and that I think is the last little piece before we can really mm -hmm. put that thing together. So we'll just hang on to this. Um, zoning regulations with city code on searchable website linked from our website. That was the 750 um, needed to decide whether we wanted to do that or are we interested in having our. It cost us 750 to have it done. Have it done, yeah. And and that's then, a one-time deal. Yeah, and then it'll, you know, it's it's just part of our city code sitting out there on the website. I mean, it's but they keep it updated and all that other. When I send it, yes. Okay. Yeah, they're not going to reprint a hard copy of that. Right, right. but I mean, the, the, web, but, yeah. the web will be kept up. Yes. And that's accessible for everyone? Yes. Okay. You know, we'll just put a link on our website that'll send it right to it even if we put a pdf on our website it's not searchable you know right. so it's very 
cumbersome to try to use. So okay. if we have a searchable website okay. where folks can search for a certain item or uh, topic. I say do it. Yeah. Need a motion. Make a motion to put the... Yes. Make a motion to uh, add the zoning regulations with city code on such a website at uh, $750. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4 1. Communication with Minnis Chapel. I think this is just an information thing from Mitch. I can find it here. He basically has bought two web based TV stations, I believe it is. And he is um, using one. Um, for PE programs, athletic events, concerts, all that kind of stuff, um, for no limits, and anyone can watch for free on any device. He has another one um, that could be used by any community organization as long as the event was rated G for all audiences. Um, for the second one, he's looking for equipment. Um, anyway, what he's hoping, his hope is to sell sponsors advertising for the events, and 50% of the dollars would go to the Education Foundation, and the other 50% would be used to offset contract fees with CityLink TV. So. It's just kind of an informational thing if you're interested in advertising or if you have an event that you're interested in having broadcast or if you know of a couple of high school kids that you think would be great for that kind of project, any of that kind of thing, you might want to get in touch with Mitch. Okay, old business, employee percentage on health insurance. Yeah, when we passed that the other day, um, I got ready to do the paperwork and realized that we had not, um, it, when we had discussed it before, we had discussed the city employees picking up 5%. Um, if that was what you still wanted to do, we did not include that in your motion. So we would need a motion for that. Or we would need to discuss what we want yes. to do. But that would just leave it the way it has been, correct? It would be very close to what it has been. If they pick up 5%? Mm -hmm. That's... Well, well, you know, obviously for the older ones, it's a little bit more than for the younger ones, but 5% is about what we did previously on the old plan. I would, I would be interested in leaving it the way it is. Uh, we've saved, what, right at $28,000, I think. The way it is right now, you're not expecting the employees to pay anything? Because that's the motion you kind of passed. No, well, I think we need to go to the 5%. Yeah, yes. So that's why we need a motion. Yes. So we need a motion for the employees to pay 5%. I thought they were paying 5%. Okay. So I need a motion for the employees to pay 5% of their health insurance premium. I'd make a motion for employees to pay 5% of their health. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. If there are no other business, I would look for a meeting or motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.